few days of January 1994, Nirvana finished up a three-day recording session that they had at Robert Lang Studios in Seattle. Well, actually, Kurt was only there for one day, the final day, and this is where the band came up with the song, You Know You're Right. Cobain made a rare call to his father, Don Cobain, after that recording session, where notably both father and son said that they loved one another for the first time in a long time. This would be the final time Kurt would ever speak to his father. At the beginning of February, the band flew to France to begin their European tour, and included second guitarist Pat Smear making the band a four-piece for the tour. The first show on the tour, played on February the 4th, was played in Paris, France on a variety show, and was a television appearance which saw the band play just three songs that night on the French television channel Canal Plus. And those three songs were Rape Me, Penny Royalty, and Drain You. Now going back to the point that this was a French television variety show, this is where the band decided to don their black pinstripe suits which they had purchased and they called them their knack outfits of course referring to the band the knack that would dress like that and the tour that Kurt albeit begrudgingly went on seemed to be off to an okay start through his work with groups in the area Chris Novoselic has come to simple but telling conclusions like now that the political landscape and economic landscape of the West is, or the Europe has changed, you know, countries like Slovenia are just part of Europe now. There's really no Iron Curtain or anything. People are the same wherever you go, really, basically. Um, it's just people want to live a normal lifestyle without hassles. While in Paris, the band did their now famous photo session with photographer Yuri Lanquette. And this turned out to be the final ever photo session that the band did. Even this early in the tour, those close to him noticed a change in Kurt. He was a mess at this point, Shelley Novoselic recalled. It was sad, he was just so worn out. Kurt traveled in a separate tour bus from Novoselic and Grohl, but Shelley thought their relationship seemed better. The next shows were in Portugal and Madrid, and this is where we'll just stop the video for a second. Here we have some footage of Kurt Cobain in Portugal, backstage with the band The Buzzcocks. Pretty cool, really, because this is some of the last ever footage taken of Cobain. But also interesting because he brings up the Lollapalooza concert. Now, that was the big show that was scheduled to be played later on in 1994. Nirvana was being offered like $9 million, $10 million to play it. A lot of money but Kurt had reportedly turned it down. That had always been the story, right? That Kurt didn't want to do Lollapalooza. Maybe that's true. Sure could be. I'm not saying it's not, but I just found this bit of audio interesting anyway.
And next up, we move on to the gig in Barcelona, Spain, just the fourth date on the 38 date tour. And Kurt was already talking about canceling. This is where it was stated he phoned his wife Courtney in a rage, saying he hated everything, everybody. When the band were in Madrid, Kurt walked through the audience and he saw kids on drugs giving him the thumbs up. But that is not what Kurt wanted at all. He hated that. And that is what he told his wife Courtney. He did not want to be an icon for drugs or looked up to for that. Before the tour had began, Kurt stated that he wanted a break mid-tour, where he could just hang out with his wife and daughter and be a tourist for a bit. Kurt did want Courtney on the road with him, but at the time she was finishing post-production on her album, Live Through This. Kurt went to one of the tour managers and asked what would happen if he canceled the tour, and he was told that because of past cancellations, they would be liable for damages from any missed shows unless there was illness. We're still, we, it's a, we don't know what we're going to do yet either. It's kind of, it's up in the air right now. Still a mystery to us. After playing their handful of shows in France and then one in Switzerland, February the 20th came around, and this is where Kurt turned 27 years old. John Silva, Nirvana's manager, jokingly gave Kurt a carton of cigarettes as a present. Four days later, while in Milan, Italy, Kurt and Courtney celebrated their second anniversary, but they did that apart, as Courtney was still in London doing press for her new album. They did talk on the phone and plan to celebrate when they reunited about a week later. The band played their next five Italy shows, the last two which were in Milan, and those two shows were on the 24th and 25th of February. Now it was at this time that it was said that something serious had shifted in Kurt. He had come to Chris that day and said that he wanted to cancel the tour. He gave me some bullshit, absurd reason for why he wanted to blow it off, Novoselic recalled. Kurt was complaining about his stomach, an ailment which had caused him problems in the past. However, Novoselic was not 100% convinced of these claims by Cobain. There was some kind of situation, but Kurt didn't share any specifics with Chris. Kurt didn't cancel the tour that night and the band went on to play their one show in Slovenia on the 27th of February. And this particular stop on the tour would be special for Novoselic as it was a show where his relatives would be attending. And this would be the second to last show that Nirvana would ever play. It was stated that during their three days in Slovenia, the rest of the band toured the countryside while Kurt stayed in his room. Next up, the band moved on to Munich, Germany, where they had two shows scheduled to play at Terminal Eins. But the band only played one of these dates in Munich, and that would be the final ever show Nirvana would play. Just 17 shows in to a 38-date tour, just under halfway there. That is how far Kurt got through the European tour. It was stated that day that Kurt seemed to be in desperation and panic somewhat, and he wasn't doing too good at all. Kurt had selected The Melvins, one of his all-time favorite bands, to be the opener for Nirvana that night. The band played 23 songs that night, including a five-song encore. However, notably during the show, there was a power outage. This power outage came during the song Come As You Are, when the power came back on, the band continued on where they had left off. However, they skipped the next song that was to be played on the set list, and that was Smells Like Teen Spirit. So Teen Spirit was left off the set for their final show. And the final song played that night in the encore, which would ultimately be the final song that Nirvana would ever perform live on stage, was Heart Shaped Box. And we're going to listen to a snippet of that now.
stage, Kirk grabbed his agent, Don Muller, who happened to be at the show, and announced, that's it, cancel the next gig. There were only two shows before their scheduled break, which Muller arranged to postpone. Kurt saw a doctor the next morning who signed a slip required for their insurance, stating that he was too ill to perform. The physician recommended he take two months off. Despite the diagnosis, Novoselic thought it was all an act. He was just too burned out. Chris and several members of the crew flew back to Seattle, planning on returning for the next leg of the tour on March 11. Kurt headed to Rome, where he was to meet up with Courtney and Francis. And this is where on March 3rd that Kurt checked into room 541 of Rome's five-star Hotel Excelsior. And Courtney and Francis were due to arrive later that night. And this is where, of course, things went from bad to worse for Cobain. He was found OD'd the following morning on the floor of his hotel. After taking a large amount of Rohypno pills combined with wine... Cobain was placed in a coma and there were grave fears for his life. But thankfully, Kurt made it out of the coma and lived to fight another day. And that wound up that dreaded final European tour that Nirvana went on. 38 dates scheduled. The band played just 17. So they did about a month of a two-month tour. Got about halfway through. But by all means and all reports, Kurt was done before the band even left. He was never really looking forward to this tour at all, and basically, the second it began, he wanted it to be over. And of course, we all know the tragic ending on April the 5th, just one month after the Rome incident of 1994. Kurt was found dead at his home in Seattle, so... A very tragic end for a talented and much-beloved human being and musician. 